We're informed by the body of research that shows that so far every form of assessment we've come up with has been harmful to a greater or lesser degree. But there, there appears to be no way, you know, it's a Heisenberg uncertainty problem. You can kind of look at where the children are, but doing so disturbs where they're going. <laughs> or you can let them go and wait to look at where they've been. Even the, even the most non-invasive techniques appear to change the approach that the adults who are working with the children do. And so there are secondary negative effects to the assessment. So, um, so we don't assess the children uh, at our school. Um, you don't at all? We don't at all. Yeah. We don't measure. We don't measure growth. As your collaboration and teamwork, uh, this can go in any order and hence the significance of this in the center because they don't have to be in order. A student can jump. Um, this is the fuel gauge on our GPS. <laughs> so the fuel gauge is the daily assessment. I guess I'll try it again. Like, give a little twist. And that one kind of makes sense. It's not really a mood thing. But, uh, make sure to tell us what your design challenge was, because it's really interesting how some of these uh, start to blend and you're not quite sure which one it is. So just remind us of that uh, before you start, please. Thank you. We're trying to remember what our design challenge was. <laughs> <laughs> I believe we were related to assessing student outcomes. Feel right? All right. We, we rewrote it, so, uh, but ours is related to sort of the next generation assessment. So here we go. Yes? Yes! yes. IGPS. <laughs> so our project is we've created an IGPS, meaning goals, progress, and skills. It's an interactive tool for learners to plot, communicate, and communicate their personal, holistic learning journey. So for teachers, this is a way to track and visualize your students' progress on those very hard to assess 21st century critical life skills for what you can look at one student or many students. For, for the learner, this is an opportunity to visualize, plot, and track your progress on those skills from kindergarten all the way through higher education. So we understand that soft skills are hard to understand when they've been gained. So what we've done is we've created this reflection box, and as it works, is a student can put it on their desk, and sort of like the buttons we get today, students can come and give people tokens based on creativity that they see, citizenship, problem solving, communication, and collaboration. So people can come by, well, you did a great job being creative, and contribute to it. We also have this, this is a personal reflection box. It's where to put your own personal goals, where you want to go, and it even has a little combination so kids can kind of keep it close to them. So the virtual part of this, imagine Google Maps, except that every road on your map is a different critical life skill that we've identified. Things like empathy and citizenship, problem solving, creativity. And you have a road that charts your progress based on milestones. And you can express those milestones in different ways. It might be traditional like a test or maybe something that you create. And because this GPS, this online map, is also an e-portfolio, other students can see your milestones in those artists facts and they can click to download, reuse, and build upon them. And teachers can zoom in to see your progress on these milestones as well as one student or multiple students. So since we have this and it kind of tracks your progress and your long term, we wanted something more that gauged instantaneous results. Something that would empower. So what we created is they have these things like emotio bands. So what you can do is students in your class can wear them. So pretend like all of you guys, imagine that you're all wearing it. And depending on how engaged you are, your energy comes forward to spin the spinner. So let's give it a try. Yes? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> yes? You know when you've engaged as students, you know that the, the classroom is a place where it's supposed to be a place of energy and excitement. So lastly, one, two, three. Yes. 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 Thank you. 
Just don't divide them. <laughs> if schools are for individual development, if they're for collaborative effort, if they're to serve the public good, an assessment should reflect those goals. Their form should follow function. Assessment should be embedded in instruction. It should be shaped by teachers and students. It should be focused on soft and critical skills. And it should use the Action Collab model. <laughs> <laughs> so we've developed a product for each student to be able to have this on the desk and students can give each other awards based on their creativity, citizenship, communication. And what we've done is this product is something can either be in a desk or put into a binder. It's going to have uh, things on the side that it can help stand up or you can fold up. And then each kid is going to have their individual coins so they can, tokens that they can put into each slot. We said token because we don't want it to be a currency type of situation. Um, and basically the, the instructions, guidelines, or type of thing would be the learner would get 20 tokens in a board or a plastic sheet for their binder, um, must give at least five tokens a week to someone else based on the skills, the critical thinking, uh, critical skills and soft skills, and must provide a reason for giving the token and fill the column on the board advanced levels. And students use a help token if they're stuck and they're, they're not getting any tokens for creativity or collaboration, they can put a help token in so someone can come and help them out. Um, and tokens are not added. A student's tokens stay in circulation, um, encouraging learners to help one another. And the whole process is that these tokens will be going towards uh, a project, like a community service project, for example, that they might be doing. So an example of a collaborative project would be for students to design a solution to a problem in their community. Students then research, collect data, and decide maybe that they want to clean up their community. So then they design, deliver, present, evaluate, and during each of these steps, they're assessed by teachers and other students with the critical skills in mind. And the outcome is, one of the things that our, our product does, it helps connect so-called soft goals with more traditional goals. So for example, if built into whatever the project is, there is a empathy citizenship uh, building skill or um, something similar to that, then over time as projects are tracked, we think that we can show that, that say empathy and citizenship and or creativity are linked to an increase in average daily attendance for say K-12 or retention in uh, in, at the community college level and then use those data points um, to um, show that soft skills should be included as part of what a uh, regular skill assessment and used to also raise funds. Thank you. That feels like uh, it feels like a really interesting question. It feels like it's something that's that's actually sort of remarkably um, low tech and easy to try. We think there could be really great stories that come out of that experiment. So, um, so that's so that's one. Um, uh, so the the um, the one that gets that get or the two that get sort of. Uh, uh, Siamese, uh, for lack of a better term, <laughs> lack of a better term is that so the, we learn and, and Pandora for learning. Um, And frankly, we want to see all of the ideas um, from move forward and, and keep going. This is this is about changing education. This is about you know pushing the needle forward.